Neorealism or structural realism is a theory of international relations that says power is the most important factor in international relations. It was first outlined by Kenneth Waltz in his 1979 book Theory of International Politics. Alongside neoliberalism, neorealism is one of the two most influential contemporary approaches to international relations. The two perspectives have dominated international relations theory for the last three decades. Neorealism emerged from the North American discipline of political science, and reformulates the classical realist tradition of E. H. Carr, Hans Morgenthau, and Reinhold Niebuhr. Neorealism is subdivided into defensive and offensive neorealism. <inaudible> <inaudible> Origins Neorealism is an ideological departure from Hans Morgenthau's writing on classical realism. Classical realism originally explained the machinations of international politics as being based on human nature, and therefore subject to the ego and emotion of world leaders. Neorealist thinkers instead propose that structural constraints—not strategy, egoism, or motivation—will determine behavior in international relations. John Mearsheimer made significant distinctions between his version of offensive neorealism and Morgenthau in his book titled The Tragedy of Great Power Politics. Theory Structural realism holds that the nature of the international structure is defined by its ordering principle, anarchy, and by the distribution of capabilities measured by the number of great powers within the international system. The anarchic ordering principle of the international structure is decentralized, meaning there is no formal central authority, every sovereign state is formally equal in this system. These states act according to the logic of self-help, meaning states seek their own interest and will not subordinate their interest to the interests of other states. States are assumed at a minimum to want to ensure their own survival as this is a prerequisite to pursue other goals. This driving force of survival is the primary factor influencing their behavior and in turn ensures states develop offensive military capabilities for foreign interventionism and as a means to increase their relative power. Because states can never be certain of other states' future intentions, there is a lack of trust between states which requires them to be on guard against relative losses of power which could enable other states to threaten their survival. This lack of trust, based on uncertainty, is called the security dilemma. States are deemed similar in terms of needs but not in capabilities for achieving them. The positional placement of states in terms of abilities determines the distribution of capabilities. The structural distribution of capabilities then limits cooperation among states through fears of relative gains made by other states, and the possibility of dependence on other states. The desire and relative abilities of each state to maximize relative power constrain each other, resulting in a balance of power, which shapes international relations. It also gives rise to the security dilemma that all nations face. There are two ways in which states balance power, internal balancing and external balancing. Internal balancing occurs as states grow their own capabilities by increasing economic growth and or increasing military spending. External balancing occurs as states enter into alliances to check the power of more powerful states or alliances. Neorealists contend that there are essentially three possible systems according to changes in the distribution of capabilities, defined by the number of great powers within the international system. A unipolar system contains only one great power, a bipolar system contains two great powers, and a multipolar system contains more than two great powers. Neorealists conclude that a bipolar system is more stable less prone to great power war and systemic change than a multipolar system because balancing can only occur through internal balancing as there are no extra great powers with which to form alliances. Because there is only internal balancing in a bipolar system, rather than external balancing, there is less opportunity for miscalculations and therefore less chance of great power war. That is a simplification and a theoretical ideal. <laughs> Defensive realism Structural realism is divided into two branches, defensive and offensive realism. Both branches agree that the structure of the system is what causes states to compete for power, but defensive realism posits that most states concentrate on maintaining the balance of power. These are called status quo states. Revisionist states are said to be the only states that seek to alter the balance.
Topic: <laughs> Offensive realism. Offensive realism, developed by Mearsheimer differs in the amount of power that states desire. Mearsheimer proposes that states maximize relative power ultimately aiming for regional hegemony. <laughs> <laughs> Scholarly debate <laughs> Within realist thought While neorealists agree that the structure of the international relations is the primary impetus in seeking security, there is disagreement among neorealist scholars as to whether states merely aim to survive or whether states want to maximize their relative power. The former represents the ideas of Kenneth Waltz and defensive realism while the latter represents the ideas of John Mearsheimer and offensive realism. With other schools of thought. Neorealists conclude that because war is an effect of the anarchic structure of the international system, it is likely to continue in the future. Indeed, neorealists often argue that the ordering principle of the international system has not fundamentally changed from the time of Thucydides to the advent of nuclear warfare. The view that long-lasting peace is not likely to be achieved is described by other theorists as a largely pessimistic view of international relations. One of the main challenges to neorealist theory is the democratic peace theory and supporting research, such as the book Never at War. Neorealists answer this challenge by arguing that democratic peace theorists tend to pick and choose the definition of democracy to achieve the desired empirical result. For example, the Germany of Kaiser Wilhelm II, the Dominican Republic of Juan Bosch, and the Chile of Salvador Allende are not considered to be democracies of the right kind or the conflicts do not qualify as wars according to these theorists. Furthermore, they claim several wars between democratic states have been averted only by causes other than ones covered by democratic peace theory. Advocates of democratic peace theory see the spreading of democracy as helping to mitigate the effects of anarchy. With enough democracies in the world, Bruce Russett thinks that it may be possible in part to supersede the realist principles anarchy, the security dilemma of states that have dominated practice since at least the 17th century." John Muller believes that it is not the spreading of democracy but rather other conditions e power that bring about democracy and peace. In consenting with Mueller's argument, Kenneth Waltz notes that, "...some of the major democracies, Britain in the 19th century and the United States in the 20th century have been among the most powerful states of their eras. One of the most notable schools contending with neorealist thought, aside from neoliberalism, is the constructivist school, which fundamentally disagrees with the neorealist focus on power and instead emphasizes a focus on ideas and identity as an explanatory point for international relations trends. Notable neorealists Robert J. Art Richard K. Betts Robert Gilpin Joseph Grieco Robert Jervis Christopher Lane John Mearsheimer Stephen Walt Kenneth Waltz Stephen Van Evera Barry Posen Charles L. Glazer Mark Trachtenberg Topic See also Foreign interventionism International relations theory Mercantilism Neofunctionalism Neoliberalism Realism equals equals notes <laughs>